What's up everyone, welcome back, Patrick here. And moving on to the next topic, we're now gonna talk about sets in this video and in this next section. So we're gonna start off with an overview here of what sets are, I'll describe what they are, I'll introduce some terminology that you'll be running into when dealing with sets. And then at the end of this video, I'll go through some common sets that you're gonna see come up in your homework and that I'm gonna be using over the next couple of videos as well. So to begin, what I'm gonna do is start off with a definition of what sets are. And the way I like to think of sets is basically a collection of distinct objects. And sometimes another word for object is basically the elements in a set. So it could really be a collection of anything, whether it's certain words or numbers, we're mostly gonna be using numbers in this section. But in general, sets is basically a collection of distinct objects or elements. And there's different kinds of sets. So you can have finite sets or infinite. Sets. So for example, let's say the collection of or the set of integers from 1 to 10, that would be a finite set. There would only be 10 elements in that set versus the set of all integers would be an infinite set, right? There's an infinite amount of integers. Now, when we say distinct, what that means is that in a set, there's not gonna be any, there's no repeated elements. And so what you'll see in future videos is we're gonna be taking multiple sets sometimes and merging them. So let's say that two sets, if we merge them and they have the same element, well, in that new merged set, we would only write that element once. So there's not any repeated elements in a set. And then there's also no, uh, no specific order. So it is unordered. So for example, if we had the integers one to 10, they don't necessarily have to be listed in the order from smallest to largest or from largest to smallest. Sometimes they can be mixed up. There's no specific order in which elements are, uh, are listed in a set. So to introduce some more terminology, let's go through a simple example here. So let's say that we have a set, let's call it A. Set A has the elements, let's say one, two, three, four. The integers one, two, three, four. So notice that set A is a finite set. There's only four elements within it, a finite number of elements. And to show that there's certain elements in a certain set, a notation you'll see come up is one, this is an element of set A. You'll see this notation here, or two is an element of set A, or three is an element of set A, four is an element of set A. Now, if something is not an element in a set, the notation for that would be like five is not an element of set A. So whenever you see something like this, this element is part of this set, this element is not part of that set. Another thing to go over is how sets can be represented. So the first way, very simple way, is they could be represented visually. And this usually works well with finite sets. So what you can do is you could draw a circle for the set. So this is all gonna be set A, and then you just list the elements within the circle. So again, visually works well if you're working with smaller finite sets. You can fit all of the elements within the uh, circle. When you start working with larger sets or with infinite sets, then the visually, representing them visually, gets a little tougher. Another way to show sets is with something called roster notation. 
And what you'll see with this is the elements listed in curly brackets. So you'll have this curly bracket, then you'll have one, two, three, four. And then you close it off like that. Right? So this set, we can list in roster notation like this. You can also use roster notation for infinite sets. So let's say we had a set where we had the integers, all the integers that are greater than or equal to one. Well, you'd have one, two, three, four. And then to show that it's going till infinity, you could just put dots like that. So with roster notation, you can represent finite sets and infinite sets. And then the most popular way, and the way we'll be focusing mostly in this section, I'll actually start it up here, because we're gonna expand on it a lot, is with something called set builder notation. And set builder notation, just in general, what you'll see is you'll see curly brackets again, but you'll see two areas. They'll be split off with a line. Sometimes you'll see them split off with two dots, but the line is more popular. And what's gonna be in this area here is basically a function, or let's not even call it a function, let's call it a formula for the elements. And it's gonna be in terms of a variable usually, so it, very, so it is very similar to a function. I'll use the word formula instead though. So you're gonna have a formula for the elements. This line here, what this means is the phrase such that. So you're gonna have a formula for the elements such that, and then you're gonna have restrictions or conditions. Basically on that variable that you'll be using. So you'll have a formula for the elements, let's say with a variable, where, whether that will be x or n, Usually it's gonna be in terms of X. And then over here, you're gonna have restrictions or conditions on the variable. And then you're gonna close off like that. So just in general for sets, this is what set builder notation is. So if we apply this to set A that we're working with, the uh, integers one to four, What's a formula that we could represent the integers one to four? Well, what we can say is we can say x, this variable, is an element, is basically the natural numbers. And the set of natural numbers, remember it's one, two, three, four, all the way to infinity. And that set, we're gonna go through common sets at the end, but that set is basically represented with n. So we can say any natural number here such that it's less than five. Right, so x, basically we can have any natural number in this set but it has to be all of the natural numbers. This is the condition that are less than five. And so what are all the natural numbers that are less than five? One, two, three, four, like that. Another way to show this is we could say X is an element of natural numbers. So all the natural numbers where X is greater than or equal to one, less than or equal to four. We can also represent it like that. And we don't even have to write this one here. We can even just write x as less than or equal to four because we know natural numbers, they start at one. So less than or equal to four would be one, two, three, and four. It's inclusive of the four. But here, when we just said less than five, we don't write the five. It's not inclusive. So with set builder notation, there's actually multiple ways 
many times that you can represent sets. And what you want to do is you want to try to represent them in the most simple way as possible, where you're using the least amount of expressions in the set builder notation. So that in general there is set builder notation. Now, what if we apply this to set A of those integers one to four? Well, what we can do, this formula here, it could be written in words. Usually it's going to be written in expressions, but if we start off with words, what we can say a formula for x in set A is we could say x is a natural number. Because notice that 1, 2, 3, 4, those are all natural numbers. Remember, natural numbers are all of the positive integers starting at 1. So x is a natural number. However, it's not all the natural numbers, so we have to add a restriction. So we would say x is a natural number such that x is less than 5. Close bracket. So we have a formula for the elements in terms of a variable, x. This could be anything though, this could be n as well, but let's just use x. So x is a natural number, but x is less than five. So all of the natural numbers that are less than five, what is it gonna be? One, two, three, four. We could have also wrote here though, x is less than or equal to four. So a lot of times there's multiple ways to represent sets with set builder notation. So this is if we use words, but usually we're not gonna be using words, we're gonna be using expressions. So the way we can show this through an expression, a mathematical expression, is when we say x is a natural number, what we would say is x is an element of natural numbers. And this n here represents all of the natural numbers. At the end of the video, like I mentioned, we're gonna go through some common sets. Natural numbers is a common set. It's basically a list of all the natural numbers. It's an infinite set. So when we say x is an element of natural numbers, this is an infinite set here. So we have to say such that x is less than five, like that. Or another way we can write it is x is an element of natural numbers such that x is less than or equal to four. This and this are the exact same set. Or we could say where x is between one and four, inclusive of both of them. So greater than or equal to one, less than or equal to four. When you're writing out these sets, what you wanna try to do usually profs are going to look for this, is you want to try to write this out in as simple of a form as possible. So notice that if we wrote x is an element of natural numbers, where x is less than or greater than or equal to 1, less than or equal to 4, you can do that, but notice that you're adding more expressions than, than is needed. We could have just wrote that right there because natural numbers we know they start at one anyway so you don't really have to write this here so a lot of times profs will look for the most simple or see how far you can simplify this set builder notation and with practice you'll get better and better at it now another way that this could be potentially represented i don't like this way personally but a lot of times you'll see just the variable written in this area and then they'll say such that x is an element of natural numbers and then x is less than or equal to four or sometimes they'll even write end over here right personally i don't like this way if it's um if we're talking about the natural numbers i like to put this portion in the formula area but this is another potential way that this um, this set can be described so this x is an element of natural numbers. It doesn't always, this doesn't always have to be in the formula portion. In this portion, notice here it's in the condition portion. But again, this was a way that 
I don't personally prefer. But let's say that we had an example where we, um, let's say set, let's call it B, set A is all the positive and even integers. How would we represent that with set builder notation? So set B is all the positive and even integers. Notice that this is an infinite set because we'll have two, four, six, eight, et cetera, et cetera, all the way to infinity. This keeps going on forever. Right, and it's starting at two because they have to be, the integers have to be positive and even. So in this case, what we can do, one way to represent this is we could say two X, that's the formula, such that X is a natural number. X is all the natural numbers. So notice how in this case, that X is an element of natural numbers. Notice how it's a condition in this case. And this is the formula. So if we listed all the natural numbers, one, two, three, four, five, et cetera, et cetera, we would take those and multiply them by two. That's the formula. So if we take one multiplied by two, we'll have two, four, six, eight, 10. Notice that we get that same set that we're working with. Right, so this here is a way to represent this infinite set. And it's just an example of where that X is an element of natural numbers can be in that restriction area versus the formula area as we had before. And then to finally finish off the video, as I mentioned, we'll go through some common sets here. So the first one is the natural numbers, which we already used in the previous examples. And the set of natural numbers is represented with the letter N. And it's basically an infinite set, as we mentioned, starting at one, it's basically all of the positive integers, starting at one, going till infinity. Another common set is the set of integers usually represented with the letter Z and it's basically all of the integers. So we know zero is an integer and then we have plus and minus one, plus and minus two, plus and minus three, going all the way to positive and negative infinity. The third common set is rational numbers. You'll see them represented many times with Q and Rational numbers, the set of rational numbers, we can represent in set builder notation. So notice these two sets, they were in roster notation. The rational numbers we can represent with set builder notation. What we could say is that it's M over N, that's the formula. Notice there's two variables. There can be multiple variables sometimes, doesn't just have to be one variable. So we have M over N such that M and N are an element of integers. M and N, we know for a rational number, have to be integers for this fraction, where N can't be zero. So we got two conditions here, M and N have to be integers, element of Z, and then N can't be zero. Sometimes you'll actually see another way uh, to show these restrictions is they'll say M is any integer, is an element of any integer, and then they'll say n is an element of any natural number. So then you don't have to write this n does not equal zero because natural numbers, they don't have zero in them. They start at one, go till infinity. And then if it's perhaps a negative number, that would be taken care of in the uh, numerator where m can be any integer. So the negative can come from the uh, numerator. Personally though, I like, uh, I like these restrictions here. Right, so that's rational numbers. Real numbers represented with R 
and it's basically all the numbers from negative infinity to positive infinity. We didn't really go over this notation. This here is called interval notation. We're going to go through it more in future videos, but what this represents is basically all the numbers from negative infinity to positive infinity. And then we can have irrational numbers. And many times you'll see that represented with i. Or sometimes you'll see this like q apostrophe or q naught. This is basically, this represents the complement of q. We're going to talk about complements in a future video as well. Basically, a complement set is basically all the elements that are not in that original set. So this q the complement of Q, sometimes you'll even see a Q with like a bar at the top. The complement of Q or the complement set of Q is basically the elements that are not in Q. So that's how sometimes they'll represent irrational numbers, but usually it will be with, uh, with I. And one way to show irrational numbers with set builder notation is it's basically all the real numbers, x is an element of any real numbers, such that x is not an element of rational numbers. Remember real numbers, if you remember from the numbers overview video, real numbers can be either irrational or rational. Right, so here we're saying irrational numbers are basically all the real numbers, but it can't be any rational numbers. So you're just left with this irrational portion here. So that's another way to represent irrational numbers in, um, in set builder notation. And usually it's going to be represented with the uh, letter I. So those are the most common sets and a lot of times I'll be using them in the future videos. And what we're gonna do in the next couple of videos is go through examples dealing with set builder notation and introduce you to some more complicated scenarios.